Hi. When we think about how corals eat, most of us imagine this process as tentacles pushing the food through the coral's mouth. It is partially correct, but corals can eat in many different ways, and some of them don't even have a typical mouth. If you would like to learn more about how corals eat, stay tuned. Probably the biggest confusion about how corals eat is due to the fact that most of them have the ability to symbiotic interaction with single-cell algae living in the tissue. The algae, like other plants, can convert sunlight into the energy. They use some of it, and the surplus is simply shared with the hosting coral. This is an ideal situation for both organisms. Zooxanthellae get some nutrients, CO2, and safe accommodation in the coral's tissue, and in return, Coral gets oxygen, sugars, and other nutrients. Products of photosynthesis can cover up to 100% of the energy needs of corals. However, due to the fact that they are low in nitrogen and phosphorus, they are therefore mainly used as a source of energy for metabolic processes. Unfortunately, photosynthesis alone cannot provide enough building material for coral tissue. It must be taken from the water using heterotrophic form of nutrition. In order to grow, corals need to eat nutrients like every other animal. Corals as predators can catch living and dead organic matter directly from the surrounding water, which is usually limited to the range of the tentacles. Corals place themselves in the areas with the adequate flow of water, which carries nutritious plankton or organic particles. Some corals, like for instance scolimia, live as individual polyps, but others live in colonies, which can have many different forms. The good example of colonial corals are gorgonians that build protein skeletons covered with thousands of tiny polyps. When we look at a single polyp, the first thing we see is the ring of tentacles. They are used to catch and paralyze the prey. Tentacles of most of the coral species are covered with nematocysts, tiny stinging cells similar to microscopic cannons with a venom and harpoons inside. Once triggered by the prey, they get discharged and depending on the nematocyst type, they pierce or adhere to the skin of the prey to inject the poison. Simultaneously, the tentacles wrap the prey so it cannot escape and then slowly transport the paralyzed prey towards the mouth. Once swallowed, it gets digested and finally absorbed by coral. Corals feed on a variety of small organisms like plankton or even small fish. This obviously depends on the type of the corals and size of the polyps. But with some exceptions, we can assume that the larger polyps with more stinging cells are able to catch the bigger prey. It would be great to use natural and most importantly a live food for corals in the aquarium. But although we can get some living food from the specializing shops, it is difficult to keep it alive for longer time. This also carries additional problems with space or access to specialized equipment. Therefore, most of the aquarists use frozen or granulated dry food to feed the LPS corals or anemones. And it is important to use a good quality brand food prepared especially for the marine species. When we feed LPS corals with a chunky food, you must not stress them with erratic moves of the pipette, otherwise they will simply contract the polyps and ignore the food. And it is also better to give too little food than too much because corals can be gourmands. And too much food will not only worsen the water quality, but also if kept in the stomach for too long, can poison the coral. I use either long pipette or baster, and I never blow the water towards the polyps as this will only stress the corals. I simply let the granules gently drop onto the polyps. Can you see how they react? Can you see how the granules stick to the tentacles before they get swallowed? But corals simultaneously can feed on particulate organic matter in form of live organisms like phyto and zooplankton, their residues, or even excrements. These organic particles contain enough nutrients to feed corals, but because they are too little for tentacles, corals can use pinules on the tentacles to seal the zooplankton or detritus from the water column. To catch the tiniest particles like nanoplankton or bacteria, 
even pinions are too large. Coral's body is covered with mucus that traps the food which then gets transferred to the mouth thanks to the presence of the microscopic hairy cilia. Cilia are microscopic flagella that cover whole coral's body. They move in the coordinated way and they can transfer caught organic particles like bacteria, phytoplankton or detritus towards the coral's mouth. This type of feeding is usually used when aquarists provide food, for example, in the form of a powder. When I use this type of food, I usually prepare it 10 to 15 minutes before feeding. If the food is new, I usually mix it with the one previously used to let the familiar flavor soak into the new food. This way, corals can easier accept the new taste. Another trick I usually do is to provide a bit of the food a couple of minutes before the main feeding. This way corals will learn that the food is coming and they can expand their polyps. When I want to feed a particular coral, I spread the food in water several centimeters away from coral and let the current move it gently towards the polyps. Remember that not only the visible particles are food for corals. The whole cloud is nutritious as it carries microscopic particles that stick to the coral's body. If you want, you can switch the skimmer or other mechanical filtration off. But I advise to keep the circulation on. And this is for a few main reasons. Corals are more efficient in catching food when it comes with current. There are other filter feeders in the aquarium that will feed on the powder food, for example, feather duster worms, clams or even porcelain crabs. And this is a simple natural way of how corals feed. There are other ways how corals can get their food. One of them is done using structures called mesenterial filaments, which are kind of internal elongated structures covered with nematocysts. Corals can stick out the filaments to fight the other corals, but also to catch the prey. Corals can also absorb the dissolved food with the whole body directly from the water column. This way they absorb minerals for calcification, nitrates, phosphates, amino acids and other necessary substances required for a healthy growth and metabolism. As you can see, although most of the corals can benefit from the products of photosynthesis, they are highly adapted to acquiring food in many ways. Without feeding, in the system with oversized filtration, they will starve and may die. Obviously, the amount and the type of the food depends on many factors like aforementioned filtration, size and the type of the corals, amount of fish, etc. Like I said before, it is always safer to provide too little food than too much, as overfeeding may negatively affect the quality of the water. This is it for today. Please remember to leave a comment down below. We need your feedback to make our videos better. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. And see you soon.